Hello. In this video, we'll be going over creating a new Qt widgets project um, in either Qt4 or Qt5. So we'll set it up in both environments. So to start out here, you can see that I have our virtual machine open. As I've mentioned in past videos, mine looks a little different. Um, I've you know configured it a little differently and I've actually shown in some of those videos how you can uh, configure the desktop to look how you want and be more useful to you. So um, if you either don't have a virtual machine installed or set up, please go watch the, the videos in the links video training to see how to set this up. Um, okay, so to start this out, we're going to come into Qt Creator in the top left corner. And it's going to open uh, the Qt IDE. Um, my Qt might look a little different than yours. Obviously, I have a bunch of recent projects over here. Um, and I have the Field Bus Access tool installed. So if you don't have this tool installed, it's, it's pretty useful. Um, we won't really cover it in this video, but uh, there are videos about what it is and how to install it in the field bus success portion. Okay, so all we're gonna do in this video, it should be pretty simple, is just go through the setup of a new project. So I'm gonna go file, new file or project. And here's our first choice. So over on the left here, we have some different options. And you'll notice in the virtual machine, we've set up some template projects, which are I would highly recommend you use, unless you know what you're doing in Qt a lot. Um, I would recommend you start with the template and either build on it or remove what you don't need. Um, but, so here are the template projects. For this video, we're gonna use a Qt application with widgets. In other videos, we'll go over QML. So uh, for this purpose though, we'll select Qt application with widgets. Um, but you can also, you know, just do general Qt applications. Um, you know, there's different options here. You can, a, Qt is a cross-platform development system. So you can uh, develop for like Android or BlackBerry or uh, Windows. So there are other options um, that you can eventually make. So uh, we're just gonna select this and hit choose. Uh, here's pretty easy. We're just going to say uh, demo one, how about? And so that's the name of the project. And then you tell it where to create it. So by default in the virtual machines, it's created in the My, My Projects folder. You can change that obviously, but um, for this case, I won't. So next, okay, so this is one of the more fundamental uh, parts of Qt here. So a kit essentially tells Qt what, what display and what platform we're building for. So there's some different options here which represent the different displays that we can choose or virtual development which will build inside the virtual machine. So useful for testing. So I'll just go through and select some of these. So the CC Pilot ARM displays. So the ARM platform is our, and it actually as you scroll over it, it shows you a little bit of uh, the ARM, but it's missing one. So we can see here it says device XA XS VC. And actually we've, since the development of this virtual machine added the VA so all of those displays have ARM based processors. So if we, if you're using any of those displays, then you would want to select the ARM, uh, the ARM option. Um, the other option is the x86 option. And if we hover over that, we can see the XM, XM2, and actually the XL display is part of the uh, x86 uh, based processor. So if you're using an XM or an XL, 
you would want to select uh, the x86 option. And then we have uh, QT5 and QT4. So in general, I would recommend if you're using QT widgets that you can, you can add both to your project, but um, QT4, currently QT5 has some issues with video and some other things that may make it a little bit more difficult to use. So QT4 and widgets is a very good option. If you're using QML, which we're not setting up in this video, but then you would need to use QT5. The other reasons you might need to use QT5 is if you're using um, a very a newer library that QT has introduced since QT4, then you may need to upgrade to QT5. And um, so yeah, I mean, QT5 for the most part runs really well. Uh, not too many issues, and we are looking at some of the, the things that are around video and stuff like that. So those will be improving. And um, so yeah, in this case, we're just going to add both. So I'm using a VA display here for testing. So I'm going to add the ARM QT5 development. Virtual development, as I mentioned, um, will run your project in the virtual machine. And we're just going to use QT5. So we're going to deselect QT4. Um, we're not using the x86, so we're not going to select those. But we are going to select the ARM QT4. So for this project, we'll, we'll use these three selections. And just to note, if you um, later on, you know, for instance, if you want to go from like an XS display to an XM display, which is an x86 based processor, you can easily add these kits later on from the projects tab, which we'll take a look at later. Um, okay, in this last section, we are, uh, you have an option for the different resolutions of the display. So in this first option, it's a landscape resolution at 800 by 480. So this would be the resolution of the VC, VA, and XA displays. And you can also see we offer portrait resolution here. And then a landscape orientation of the XS and XM displays. So all of those displays are 10 24 by 768. And if you did want to put them in portrait, you could uh, change the resolution. You can select this and then flip it once you get into the tool itself. Um, so in this case, we're just going to select 800 by 480 normal landscape and select here. Uh, the last tab here. So you can add version control to your project. So in this project, I'll, I'll go ahead and add it since uh, even though we won't, I might make a video later on showing how to use version control because it's if you're not using version control in your projects, it's a very uh, easy and helpful way to maintain different versions and be able to easily um, back up your project and move back to previously working versions, things like that. So. I like using Git, it's what I'm used to, but uh, if you don't use Git, the other most popular one is Subversion. So you can click Configure here and add in like uh, Subversion as an option if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, uh, I'm just going to use Git. So you could set up Subversion, though I think you might need to download some of the the tools and things to set it up. Um, you can probably look that up and how to set up Subversion in Linux and then link it here in Qt. Okay, um, so I'm gonna hit finish. And there we go. So it creates our project and we'll just quickly go over the different files in that and then we'll end this video. So if we expand our folders here, You'll see uh, our project name, demo one, and then master is part of Git. So this is, it's created a, a repository for us and we're on the master branch. So I won't go too much into that. Um, all right, looking at the profile. 
So the dot profile, this is like the project file for Qt. So if in the future we want to open a project, we always want to select, like looking at my projects, for instance, if I want to come and open a previously entered project, we always want to use the dot profile to open it or else if we select just like a CPP file, it will only open that specific file. It won't open up your entire project. So here I can open this and you'll see my entire project for that is open. Um, whereas if I were to just, for instance, go and, oops, it's this, uh, just open this, you know, it doesn't open my entire project. It just opens this specific CPP file. Um, okay, so the profile is the project file. It essentially configures the settings for your project. So you don't really need to touch this too much. Um, the template that we've created sets up all of the appropriate files. Here you'll see, um, you know, we've commented like this is the configuration for QT4. This is configuration for QT5 ARM. Um, so it's giving you the include paths for your header files. The library paths um, is here. And these are all locations that we have the appropriate libraries and header files stored in the virtual machine. So if you want to actually take a look at where those are, what those are, you can go to this directory in the virtual machine and see the libraries or the include files um, you know, if, if you know what you're doing, you can add your own libraries and include files as well. Um, so it, yeah, this continues. Um, and then here we have the different libraries that we've used to support some of our added in components. Um, so we'll get into those in, in later videos, but we've added in some additional components into QT, some additional um widgets and things in in these libraries and uh support those components um okay our target path at the bottom shows where it will be installed on the display and like i said that's all sort of set up for you so it's it's good to know the general format and what things do but you should really not need to touch the profile um Okay, so next we're going to get into the main CPP file. And this is going to be the first file that's executed when your application is executed. So it's going to first execute main.cpp. Again, you should not need to really touch this file. Um, there may be some minor changes that you need to do to, like, for instance, hide a mouse pointer. But um, there's instructions for a lot of those on our knowledge base and unless something specifically tells you to uh, add something to main.cpp you really shouldn't need to touch main.cpp but essentially this is just going to create an application instance of your application class here that's auto created uh, it sets the geometry that we've set um, in the creation of the project so 800 by 480 and then shows it. Okay, so your two main files that you're gonna be modifying and working with are your application header file and your CPP file. So if you're familiar with C++, these files should be familiar to you. Um, a header and a CPP file are, uh, you know, essentially how you create classes in C++ and, um, you know, if you're not familiar with that structure, I would recommend you look online and sort of uh, get a little bit more familiar with C++. But the header file is essentially where we are going to be declaring our variables, our functions, our, our different uh, methods of the class. And our CPP file is where we're going to actually be executing the logic and code, um, which we've declared in our header file. So we'll be working with that in future videos. Uh, the resources down here, 
Um, this is where we're going to add like images and uh, data files and things like that. So right now we don't have any resources added to our project, but again, we'll add those in future videos. And then finally with widgets, if we double click the UI, um, we'll see this main template here, which is how our project looks when it's first created. And over on the left, we have our uh, widget sort of like toolbox, you know, hopefully this should be familiar from other development environments and IDEs that you've used, very similar to like Visual Studio or Code Assist or anything like that. Um, and yeah, we'll be going over in future videos how we can add these to the projects and um, start building up. So to end this video, what we'll do is just come over here and we could, if we wanted to, um, down here, we're gonna have this computer and here we can select, you'll notice we have our kits that we brought in in our project. So we're sort of saying, okay, what do we want to build for? Um, you know, this green arrow essentially will build and run the project. This green with a little ladybug by it is a debug run. And then the hammer is build. So uh, in this case, to finish it out, we can select virtual development, debug, um, demo one and hit the arrow and you'll see it's building and here we go. So it runs in our virtual machine. Right now we really don't have anything added except this close application button, which if we click, it'll kill the application and uh, yeah, we're off and running. Um, you could, if you had it hooked up to the display and know what you're doing, just build onto the display right now, but we'll go over in future videos how to set up everything for the display and make sure that um, it will build onto the display easily. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful and tune in for future videos and uh, to figure out how to go further with your project. Thanks.